Hey friends, I'd like to show you how I created this animation in After Effects using this AI generated design. So first I wanna show you how I created the design. There's this website called ideogram.ai. You can see it's similar to image generators like Midjourney where you just type in a prompt and get an image. The one key difference here is it absolutely nails the text. So if you specify the text you want in your prompt, it will actually render it within the image. So here's the prompt that I used to generate this image. It was homeworld in quotes, typeface, modern, bold with a planet logo. And this is the image that I got out of it. You may have to play around with it some, it'll still botch up the text here and there, but generally you'll at least get one good rendering out of it. So the first thing I did was open up Adobe Illustrator and bring in our image. Um, this allows us to vectorize it and work with the assets a little bit easier in After Effects. So I just choose image trace and choose six colors, which since this is a pretty low color image, and then expand that to get vectors out of it. Then I select all the letters and copy and paste them into a new document. We just reposition it and crop our artboard. Then in the layers panel, in the flyout menu, choose release to layers sequence. This ensures that they show up as layers when we import into After Effects. So then we want to go back into our original document and we want to isolate the planet. And what I want to do here is I want to actually create a flat map. Think of it like a world map. And we're going to use this to wrap it around the sphere. And then we actually want to use the pen tool to draw out these shapes and blobs for the continents and the oceans and create this flat map that we can import into After Effects. So once that's done, just crop the document to size and save it out. Now we're ready to move over to After Effects. So we can just drag in the image that we generated from Ideogram and create a new comp out of it. This is gonna be good for having a reference just as we create things. Then we can go ahead and import the Illustrator file for our text, so the letter document that we saved out. We wanna make sure that we import it as a composition that retains layer sizes. And this will be helpful if we wanna animate the layers independently. Then we can just line it up with the letters in our image. Next, we wanna go ahead and import the map image that we created and place that in our composition as well. Next, we're gonna go over to the effects and presets panel and type in sphere to search. And we're just going to apply the CC sphere effect to our layer and you'll see right away it turns it into a sphere. Then we just go into the effect settings and into shading, and you can play around with ambient. I set it to something around 110, and then we want diffuse all the way to zero. Next, we're gonna create the ring around our planet, so go up to the layer menu and choose new and select shape layer. Then in our compositions layers, just unfold that shape layer, and under the add flyout menu, choose ellipse. Then we want to resize our ellipse so that it looks right. So just uncheck this lock button and adjust the width so that the oval looks correct. Then we want to click the add flyout menu again and choose stroke. Now we just want to unfold stroke and we're going to use the color picker to select the right color and then adjust the stroke width to something that matches. Then go up to the pen tool and make sure you're in the tool creates mask mode so that we're gonna draw a mask that splits this in half. So just draw a sort of rectangle shape around it and mask half of it. Next, I'm gonna rename this layer because we're going to duplicate it so I can tell them apart and hit Command D and rename this layer as well for the back. Then we're gonna unfold the back layer and set the mask to subtract instead of add. Now you can see we have both halves. Then we just drag our back layer behind the planet. Then we can go ahead and reposition things. I also use the pick whip on the back ring to match the size to the front ring and also set the front ring as its parent. This way, if I make any position or size adjustments to the front ring, the back ring will match. Next, we can animate our sphere by going up to our effect controls for the planet layer and just setting some keyframes for the Y rotation. One other adjustment I forgot to do on the shading was turn specular all the way down to zero. Next, we're gonna add some effects to our front ring. So search for fill and apply that to the front ring. Search for simple choke 
and apply that and also composite. Then in the effect controls panel, we're going to set simple chokers choke mat to some negative value until the outline looks good. And then we're going to set the fill color using the color picker to the background color. Next, we can set some keyframes for the rotation to animate the rings. And because we have the parent set to the front ring, we only need to change that one. Next, we're going to add another shape layer and we're going to move this behind the planet and we're just going to add an ellipse to it. And then we're just going to resize it so it matches the size of the planet. And then we're going to add a stroke to it. Then we simply resize the stroke to match the border that we have on the ring and use the color picker to choose the background color purple. Then we have our animated globe. Next, I want to go and add another shape layer and we're going to create those stars in the background. So go and add a rectangle to it and then add a fill. We're also going to add pucker and bloat. So this effect will allow us to create that star shape out of it. So if we unfold that and then adjust the amount to some negative value, we'll get this star. Then we can go down to our transform and set the rotation to 45 degrees. Then we can just use the color picker to set the fill to white and we'll duplicate the rectangle with command D. Then we'll just enlarge this rectangle and add another fill. Again, use the color picker tool to pick the yellow color and we want to reorder these so that the yellow color rectangle and fill are on the bottom and pucker and bloat needs to be all the way at the bottom as well. Then we can simply resize and position these and we do the same thing for all the other stars. So just duplicate this layer and scale it and position it. Next, we're going to add the little moons. So we're just going to create a new shape layer and add an ellipse to it and a fill and pick that yellow color. And then we just size and position these as well. So just duplicate those for all the moons in the scene. Next, we're going to animate all those in. So select all those shape layers and we're just going to hit S for scale and we're going to hit a keyframe so that they're all at 100%. And then we're just going to go down to zero at frame zero. So this will have them all animate in and then we can just offset the position of these to the point at which we want them coming in. Next, we're going to go into our text comp and do the same thing. So we're just going to put our current time offset a little bit and then hit S and set a keyframe for scale. And then we're going to set the current time to zero and then set the scale to zero. So they all animate in. Next, I'm going to go through and reorder them quick just so they're all in the right order. Then using the shortcut option page down, I'm going to offset each of these frames so that they come in incrementally after each other. And there we have our finished animation. You can of course go through and adjust things however you want, but that should give you the general idea.